Welcome back. Today let us look at steady state diffusion. Okay. We are still in mass flux, we are in the middle of mass flux now. We will look at steady state diffusion. The steady state diffusion aspect is um, so useful in many different situations of biological engineering interest and that is the reason why we are looking at, looking at it separately. As you already know, the properties of interest at a point in space do not change with time at steady state. That is a definition of steady state. And what it means is that the properties of interest are not functions of time. The time derivatives can be set to 0. It is highly relevant in many biological situations. Biological diffusion say across a membrane can easily be approximated as steady state diffusion for in a wide variety of situations. And that is what we are going to see here in this class in greater detail steady state diffusion across membranes. The diffusion across membranes can take place through two broad mechanisms. The first mechanism is called the dissolve diffuse mechanism. The species I dissolves in the membrane and then diffuses through the membrane. Okay. Solute first dissolves in the membrane and then diffuses through it. The second mechanism is diffusion through pores in the membrane. There is no dissolution here. The species I just diffuses through the various pores in the membrane. The first case we are assuming that there are no pores in the membrane. In the second case it is more um, uh, realistic there could be uh, pores or pores equivalent in the membranes and this is the second mechanism. The solute needs to move through the pores in the membrane. <coughs> Let us look at dissolve diffuse mechanism first and then I will give you some pointers to look at the diffusion through pores. Dissolve diffuse mechanism. To understand this let us say that we have a reconstituted membrane, okay, membrane which does not have any proteins and so on, just the lipid bilayer and that is what is indicated here, okay, indicated here placed at the beginning of this axis, right. This is the x direction, we will look at one dimension first to understand it. In other words, if you have a cell like this and if you take a small part of the cell membrane, even though it is curved, it can be approximated to a straight membrane and that is what we have done here. We have blown up a small part of this here and considered this as a straight membrane. Okay. You could do this if the curvature is, uh, I mean if the, if the dimension is small enough, the curve is very, very small, the curvature is very, very small and therefore, it can be approximated to a straight membrane. And that straight membrane is placed here, reconstituted membrane. This is the concentration axis, this is the uh, distance axis, this is the thickness of the membrane D from here, this is the concentration C0 in the liquid on this side of the membrane, this is the concentration of uh, the species I in the liquid on this side of the membrane and there is a variation in the membrane concentration here. We are going to look at this in some detail. Let us go through this again. A species I is diffusing across the membrane of thickness D by the dissolve diffuse mechanism. The concentration of I outside the cell is C0 and the concentration inside the cell is Cl of the species. At x equals 0, the concentration of I in the membrane, okay, remember the C0 is the concentration in the extracellular space or outside the membrane. We are interested in the membrane, membrane is our system of interest, therefore we would like to know the concentrations on the membrane. At x equals 0, the concentration of I in the membrane is given as some constant times C0 and this constant is nothing but the partition coefficient of I in the membrane. By definition, the partition coefficient is nothing but the ratio of the concentration of the species in the membrane divided by the concentration in the bulk at equilibrium. 
yeah, partition coefficient k is defined as the ratio of the solute concentrations in the two phases at equilibrium. So, C m which is the concentration of I in the membrane at x equals 0 is k times C 0. Okay. This is the way of converting this concentration into an equivalent to this concentration and C m uh, the concentration in the membrane at x equals d which is here is k times C l. Okay. And a reasonable assumption is that the partition coefficient is the same on both sides of the membrane. This usually holds in many cases when the liquids here and here are not very different. If they are different, of course, the case would be different and you need to consider a different case. It is just a, diff a small uh, extension, you could always derive another uh, equation for such a case. Here, we will consider both case to be the same. It may not be applicable, this assumption may not be applicable in situations where the solutions on both sides of the membrane are widely different. And our aim here is to develop an expression for the flux of species I with distance, the variation with distance across the membrane. So, develop an expression for the flux of species I with distance across the membrane. In other words, we want to see how the flux changes with distance here. That is our interest. We want to gain insights into what is happening to the movement of the species I in the membrane. The solution is something like this, we are going to use the conservation equation approach, easier to use and there is no variation area, so that is fine. We are going to consider the membrane as a system, therefore this is going to be our system. It is a complex membrane, okay. it could be a complex membrane, lipid bilayer membrane and so on and so forth. Therefore, let us use d i effective for the diffusivity, d i strictly speaking is the diffusivity of species I in a multi-component mixture and therefore, let us use d i effective for the diffusivity. And we have already solved this, okay. diffusivity of I through a membrane uh, is nothing but, we took this equation here, we cancelled out the irrelevant terms, this go goes out of, uh, this goes to 0 because of steady state conditions, there is no bulk velocity or moment of liquid and therefore, V x, V y and V z which are the velocities of the liquid go to 0 and here there is no variation in the y direction of concentration therefore, this gets to 0 here uh, again there is no variation in the z direction therefore, that goes to 0 there is no reaction occurring and we got our equation as d i effective dou squared c i dou x squared equals 0. Okay. We have already solved this the variation is only in one dimension, therefore, one variable is good enough and rather the we do not need the partial, we can convert it into a total, there is only one dimension here, only one a function of only one variable. Therefore, the partial is converted to total, easier to solve total differential equations compared to partial differential equations, you already know this. If not, you can pick it up as a part of this course whatever is necessary. We are not doing a comprehensive math course here, we will just do the necessary aspects. I will explain enough so that even if you do not have a very strong background in math, you can pick it up, uh, but I am sure you have the basic uh, calculus background, otherwise this course is very difficult. Uh, this is mentioned in the prerequisites of the course itself. You need a, a background in engineering mathematics to be able to do this course. So, here we have converted the partial into total 0 equals d i effective d squared d squared by d x squared of C m equation 2.4.1 dash 1 and the boundary conditions you know that to solve any uh, differential equation you need boundary conditions. This is the second order differential equation, so you need two boundary conditions with respect to space. Those are at x equals 0 the uh, place where it enters, the concentration in the membrane is k c 0. You need two concentrations of uh, uh, two concentrations of the species with respect to x. One we have at x equals 0, c m equals k c 0. The other one we have at x equals d, the other extreme, c m equals k c l. So, those two become the boundary conditions. 
if we solve this equation uh, differential equation subject to these boundary conditions we just need to integrate it twice we get c m equals c 1 x plus c 2. Okay. Here we have d squared c m d x squared equals 0 which means d d x of d c m d x equals 0 and so on so forth. Therefore, d c m d x equals 0 becomes the equation that you can solve and you integrate it twice you get c m equals c 1 x plus c 2 c 1 and c 2 are the constants of integration. To find the constants of integration you need the boundary conditions. If you substitute x equals 0, you get c 2 equals uh, c m here at x equals 0, c m at x equals 0 is k c 0, therefore c 2 equals k c 0. Similarly, using the other boundary condition, you can get k c l equals c 1 times d, you are substituting x equals d here, c 1 d plus, we already know that c 2 is k c 0, so you get this and therefore, C 1 becomes K C L minus K C 0 divided by D and that is written in this form here equation 2.4.1 dash 6. So, we have C 2 and C 1 therefore, we have solved the equation if you substitute it back you get C m equals K C 0 minus K C 0 K times C 0 minus C L x by D. So, we have a concentration profile of C in the membrane, C as a function of x. Right? Therefore, uh, this is also, okay, we will come to that in a little while. Therefore, the flux which is what we are looking at as a part of this problem is purely diffusive flux. Therefore, di effective dou C m dou x dou C m dou x we can get from this which turns out to be k by d c 0 minus c l times d i effective this is your flux that is equation 2.4.1 dash 8. So, what do we get here flux is a constant there is no variation with space in the membrane of the flux flux is a constant. That is what we are going to see first when we look closer, you know we are doing an analysis. So, we need to draw some insights. The flux is a constant across the membrane is a good insight. From here we got that as the equation indicates the steady state flux is a constant there is no x here therefore, the steady state flux is independent of position. Also, if C 0 is greater than C L, the flux is in the positive x direction as given by this expression here, the flux will be positive as long as C 0 uh, is greater than C L. If C 0 is less than C L, the flux will be in the opposite direction. Okay? You get a negative of the flux which means the flux is in the opposite direction, flux is a vector. This, const this uh, group here k d i effective by d is called or is defined as the permeability of the membrane for the solution uh, solute I uh, in this case. So, permeability of the membrane to solute I. So, it is k times d i effective by d. Okay. See how nicely this has come about k is nothing but the dissolution uh, representation d i effective is nothing but the diffusivity representation. So, the dissolve diffuse mechanism comes about nicely in the way this is popping out. Also note that the permeability is dependent on the thickness of the membrane and therefore, it is not an intrinsic membrane property. If the membrane is thicker, the permeability would be lesser. Okay. So, I mean it is inversely proportional to the thickness therefore, it will be less. Therefore, it is not an intrinsic property. The permeability is a very useful property, but it is not an intrinsic property. Also note that this k the, uh, the uh, partition coefficient is nothing but the concentration of i in the membrane at x equals 0 divided by c 0. And we assume that the constant that k is the same and therefore, it can be equated to the other side also the concentration in the membrane divided by C l. Okay. If k is less than 1 which is which can happen quite often 
the concentration in the membrane is at, at x equals 0 is actually less than c 0 that is intuitive that is not very uh, that is not against intuition. However, it also means that the concentration in the membrane on the other side at x equals d is also less than the bulk concentration that is counterintuitive when you do not think about it that way right. The concentrations on the membrane surfaces are less than that in the fluids it is ok here intuitive here it is actually not and this is already shown to you, but I did not point it out at that time we had um, I had indicated it here in this figure. This is the concentration profile the variation the linear variation that we actually got uh, this was first indication I, we this could have been whatever. Uh, since I knew the answer I had, I had indicated this it is a linear variation, but here the point is the concentration of C m at x equals 0 is less than C 0 which is fine. Here the concentration of C m at x equals Z d is actually less than C n this you kind of uh, do not expect it is counterintuitive, but it is actually true this is the concentration axis right. So, there are these nice things that come out of uh, analysis which we looked closer and shown by the dark dotted line and the discontinuities at the surface in the figure as we just discussed. So, that is the dissolved diffuse mechanism for the diffusion through pores I am just going to point you out to uh, how to go about it. You can complete the information by looking at various books the textbook and so on so forth. So, the diffusion through pores for completeness suppose this is the membrane you could have pores like this through which the solute diffuses and we are going to assume that it is not going to pass through the other parts of the membrane. The pores could be straight if the pores are straight the tortuosity is supposed to be 1 the pores could be convoluted which means the tortuosity is greater than 1. Tortuosity, tortuosity is nothing but the length of the pore divided by the thickness of the membrane. If it is straightforward, then the length of the pore will be equal to the thickness of the membrane and therefore, the ratio is 1 tortuosity. Here the length of the pore turns out to be greater than the thickness of the membrane therefore, the tortuosity is greater than 1. So, to repeat the membrane is made up of pores in a non permeant matrix a matrix through which the solutes cannot dissolve and diffuse. The pores are filled with a with a solvent through which the solute diffuses when the pores are large ok that is the first thing that we are going to consider when the pores are large the dimension of the pores are much larger than the solute size that is what we mean the dimensions of the pores are much larger than the solute size. And the permeability can be modified as this, this is good enough P dash becomes d i k by d which is the actual permeability of the membrane. You just multiply it by something called an epsilon divided by the tortuosity you will be fine you will get the permeability of the uh, membrane with pores to the species i this has been shown already ok. To, for completeness d i is the diffusivity of solute i in free solution k is the partition coefficient d is the membrane thickness epsilon is the porosity which is the volume fraction of pores in the membrane and uh, or the volume of pores divided by the total volume of the membrane including pores and tau is the tortuosity a measure of the mean distance traveled by the solute in relation to the thickness of the membrane ok. This ratio is good enough. So, this is fine for uh, the situation when the pores are large ok. I have just mentioned it I have not derived it and so on and so forth I am not going to derive it I will give you a reference later where you can go and see how this turns out. However, the more interesting situation is when the pores are comparable in size to that of the solute ok. Then the pores then the solute is not uh, so free to move so free to diffuse as in the case of a free solution the diffusivity in a pore is less than that in free solution and this is called hindered diffusion. Here I am just going to give you the expression and I am going to give you a reference where this has been derived p double dash is the permeability of the membrane when the pores are comparable in size to the solute it is d i 
times a function of a by r uh, divided by the thickness of the membrane the tortuosity the partition coefficient times 1 minus a by r the whole squared times the uh, porosity of the membrane. This function a by r is given in various forms 1 minus 2.1 not 4 4 a by r plus 2.089 a by r cubed and so on and so forth for a by r is less than 0.4 where r is the pore radius and a is the solute radius. Uh, this is known and the derivation of this is actually given in Wise, which is one of your reference books 1996 cellular biophysics volume 1 ok volume 1 transport. If you go to this book you will get how this is derived. Uh, I do not want to derive this as a part of this course, it is a little beyond what I envision as the scope of this course and therefore, please go to this reference to get this. We will stop here, uh, in, this, in this class we looked at uh, the dissolve diffuse mechanism of diffusion of a species I through a membrane and, <coughs> and diffusion through pores of a species I through a membrane and got useful expressions for permeability. When we meet next, we will continue the course further. See you in the next class.